hello there. This is Smith Welding and Restoration. I am your host, Adam Niffin. Stick around, see what's in the garage this week. Hey folks, Adam here. Uh, noisy here in the background is actually Jeremy working on the shotguns for Shotgun Betty's. So, if you've seen that video, great. Uh, tell us what you think about that. Now right now, today, listening to uh, Velvet Hammer, um, my buddy Ken Cooper, down south, uh, Street Rotter Kenny. Oh goodness, I'm missing people, I'm sorry. Uh, these are the folks I come into contact on a regular basis, either through YouTube or Facebook or phone calls, you know. Um, I discuss dealing with carburetors, carburetor builds. Well, here's the fact. What I charge to rebuild carburetors is not a profitable situation. But, but, my main vice in that is it's shameless self-promotion, yet again. Uh, marketing at its finest and simplest. What I'm dealing with is, if somebody brings me a carburetor, in this day and age, chances are it's on something very interesting and it probably, probably needs some manner of work. So, all fair in love and war, that's why I started advertising my services. There just isn't anybody around professionally doing carburetors. So, this is a Proform by Classic Motorsports E85 carburetor. It's based off of the 850 Holly double pumper frame. Uh, the owner called me up needing help. Point of fact, I charge him an hour for my time to go over there and sort it out. We spent two and a half, two and three quarter hours uh, troubleshooting all the possible causes and issues. I reset just about every setting on this carburetor. Mind you, it's a holiday platform. There's not that many settings. Came the determination, it's internals. Um, quick fuel is who it's by. Classic motorsports, quick fuel, I don't know. Anyhow, this is what you get for your, um, it's, it's a spendy kit, let's just say that. That's what you get for your money. These right here are called power valves. You get a good backfire, generally you're going to blow them out. They've got a diaphragm down inside and they work very similar to a automotive thermostat. You blow that diaphragm inside and it allows unregulated fuel at inappropriate times. You've got your accelerator pump diaphragms. Those don't generally perforate but it does happen. Uh, you got your needles. Now, the front needle on this one actually stuck. I cleaned it up and got it working again, but if that's stuck, we got other issues. It's externally adjustable as far as the float goes, but I don't trust that shit anyhow. I like to get it open, get my hands on it, so forth and so on. So without further ado, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the, the camera around here so you can kind of see the teardown. Uh, I'm gonna cut parts out. I'm gonna fast forward through a bunch. Carburetors, by and large, are a boring, boring thing to watch. Now here's my disclaimer. I know that I know more than the average bear out there on carburetor building performance, how they work, why they work, what makes them do what they do. I by no means am the authority on carburetor rebuilds. And there are still seven adjustments, roundabouts, seven adjustments on a quadra jet I don't quite understand um, or have had the capacity or need to dicker with. I'm at the point in my 
professional knowledge of carburetors that I can take it apart and put it back together and make it work. I can set the primary adjustments that are required and I know why I do them and how they affect the carburetor. All of the other fine tuning, custom building, rejetting, all the fancy shit that goes with that, I'm not the guy. I'm just not. I will be, eventually, if it's called for. Um, when I get a project into the shop, I research it. I research how, why, what, where, when. Um, I approach everything I get similar to uh, the old author Isaac Asimov. He was known as the authority on everything. Why? Because if you kids remember the old Dewey Decimal System, that man published written material in every division, every major division of the Dewey Decimal System, all right? The man knew his shit. Well, aside from just being an off-the-hook genius, when he got a commission to write about a subject, he threw himself at the subject and learned everything he could, so he could be an authority on that subject. That being said, I live my life in similar fashion. I get a project that I know nothing about, but I know that I can sort it out. If I get my hands on it, I can do it. Then I do the adequate research to know enough information to get me where I need to be. I can answer the questions, I can field the phone calls. Um, that is what has gotten me this far in my life. I was the kid of insufferable wives. Alright, enough of the commentary and bullshit. Let's get to work. Alright, so these fittings are powder coated and you want to be really gentle with them to try and not damage them. The guy's got a very well dressed car. We want to maintain that for him. It is our job to do so. Just say they didn't short anybody when they built this car up. Um, I'm pretty sure it was an amateur, a do-it-yourselfer. I'm going to show you this carburetor, this uh, car, when we go out there to replace this carburetor. Can you see that muck in there? I need to get all the plumbing out of my way before I can really dig at the roots of our issue. Remember that blue point kit I showed you that I use for everything? Yeah, here we are again. even checking the needles to see where they're adjusted to. It's a moot point. Somebody put a different needle in one of these adjustment adjusters. It's different than the rest of them. I look at all the pieces that pull them out and look for pitting, scarring, soot, muck. Uh, the reason I didn't even bother checking those is I know I'm set wrong. I know they're set wrong because I was the last one to set them. Um, when I got out there, the owner, now mind you folks, if you're brave and you want to mess with your carburetor, do it! Get in there, learn something. Um, I think this guy would have been just fine all by himself if there weren't something internally wrong. And there's got to be something internally wrong because it runs like shit no matter what adjustments you use. <laughs> See how that drops out of there? When I pulled it apart, it stuck up there. Even when I let it down, it stuck. 
that was a big, big sign of something wrong. Get these caps off of there. This is where you float your needle. This is where most of the magic happens in these carburetors right here, folks. You've got nylon washers here. Oh, lordy. That's what E85 does to steel, all right? We're gonna have to clean that up for sure. Is that a sign of something wrong inside? Uh, it could be. I'm not worried about saving these washers. I should have a replacement. Now, as it goes generally, I leave all the parts from the prior carburetor build on the table. That's from a quadra jet, that last quadra jet I built. I leave all the parts from the prior carburetor on the table until I build the next one. This table always looks like a mess, but if I get a call on something not right, an issue, I got everything laid out still. I don't do a lot of carburetors. I do a couple dozen a year. Oh, lordy, lordy. There's no sludge or anything. It just needs a deep clean in the brush. So we'll get that taken care of. back. I keep all the gaskets. Even if I dip a carburetor, I keep all the gaskets. I actually throw all the stuff I'm going to throw away. I wind up throwing over here in the corner, over over in the corner of my, my table. So I've got it on hand all the time, period. 